especially to those from disadvantaged homes and communities. I am so proud to be involved in an organization that makes such a great impact in Israel. And I'm especially thrilled to introduce my dear friend, Alana Molstein, as our guest speaker tonight. Alana has a very impressive resume as a super mom, university lecturer, dietitian, nutritionist, influencer, public spe speaker, and published author. What doesn't she do? But the most impressive thing about Alana is her tremendous energy and passion. She burns up the screen on Instagram. My hope is that tonight, Alana will share some of her secrets so we can all learn some good eating habits and achieve some of that positive energy. By the way, her latest book you can drop is a Wall Street bestseller and is available on Amazon. There is also an ebook and audiobook available. Take it away, Alana. Thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. You're really so sweet. And thank you everyone for being on today. Sunday night's not uh, the easiest time for all of us, I know, but uh, so good for yourself uh, and for the energy that you can have and for those that you can care for, for being on tonight and taking this time to just focus on your own self-improvement and knowledge in the space of nutrition. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit more about me in case anyone doesn't know. I used to be morbidly obese, like part of my story, my passion, because I do open my eyes really big. I speak really passionately about nutrition. And sometimes it's like, whoa, but you should know it comes from a place where I was really, really overweight. I was just so much bigger um, and I struggled for so many years and learning more about what to eat and why it's so great has made me not only love those foods more, uh, which a lot of people wonder, like, how do you just eat healthy all the time? It's because I have such a positive association with the foods that led me to feel better than I ever could have imagined feeling. Um, and so that's why I speak so passionately about this. That's why I love what I do. And that's why I hope today I can encourage you to make some healthier choices in your own life. Um, I think about this every day, especially in 2020. It's harder to be happy now. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but I work with a lot of private clients, a lot of women, a lot of moms, um, a lot of just people. And I'm finding like across demographics, socioeconomic statuses, like where you live in the world. Um, it's just not an easy time for anyone. So I just, I'm so thankful every day that I've made healthy choices um, and that I know how to eat well. And I, I'm gonna explain to you now because I can't imagine also having to deal with, with the low energy one feels when they don't eat well. And that I felt when I didn't eat well. So a lot of my energy, um, you know, is inherent, it's a lot of it's excitement, and a lot of it is because I really try to fuel, I know that's a cheesy line, I really try to, you know, fill my body with smart things, um, and I think it makes a better mood for everyone overall. So I don't know if, um, I'll just go off a little bit, and then I do love taking questions, I don't like hearing myself speak for a uh, long period of time at all, so I like a 15 second TikTok or real video, but um, I'm gonna just give a quick spiel on snacks, what it means, which ones you should choose, how to choose a better one when it's in a package or something, and uh, then we're gonna take lots of questions, okay? So, mark down your questions. Uh, first off, I want to thank Power Up. I even have one of their products here. Um, Power Up, they're also under the name Gourmet Nut. They're awesome, and um, their stuff is all kosher and healthy and wonderful, and it's a good friend of mine, and they're helping sponsor this event, so I wanted it send that shout out. Um, okay, so let's define a healthy snack. So the first thing you wanna think of when you think snack, this is the topic, so I'm gonna uh, go into this, but feel free for when it's questions, it could be about anything. Let's focus on snacks for a second. Uh, so snack, I always say the best advice I can give someone when it comes to snacking is to not make it a verb, is to make it a noun. Um, this is just really important when I, was very unhealthy, um, you know, a, a lot of it comes from big bags of hand grabs, big buckets of popcorn, big bags of holler rolls, like whatever it is, but just kind of like a non-ending activity out of eating, which it happens if you're calling snacking. Um, what you would like to do if you're trying to, and I always have an inherent voice of weight loss in because that's my specialty, that's who I work with. My best-selling book is a weight loss book. My 
best-selling program is a weight loss program. So for everyone achieving like wanting just overall healthy habits, uh, this is probably still applies, but just so you know, a lot of what I'm trying to explain is not just losing weight, but just uh, maintaining a healthy weight um, and healthy habits overall. And uh, Focusing on calling it a snack versus snacking, I find to be very helpful for just the mindset change. Um, even with my daughter, she knows if she wants crackers from the pantry, she's more than welcome to do so. She'll take crackers, and I'll explain how to choose the best crackers if you would like. Um, but she'll take a box of crackers, and I want her to, I've like taught her that you want to take out a handful, put it in a bowl close up the crackers and put it back in the pantry. Um, that sense of just slight order for yourself is something that like totally changed uh, my life and can help yours. Now, there is a time where you actually do want to snack as a verb. I love to eat. I'm a really big eater. I don't really believe in portion control. You heard me just say handful of crackers and not you know, ask anyone to weigh or measure their food. I, I don't believe in that. But there, I do love to eat. And there are times where you just want to eat. Like you want to snack, especially if you're around other people who are eating crackers and popcorn or kids and everything. And it's going on a long time. Like you're just gnashing on Shabbos, right? So like a lot of us do like to eat something. So I do recommend veggies. Veggies really are your best friend. The type of thing, it's like if you like to eat and you like to eat large volumes of food like I do, veggies are your friend. I always recommend weaving them in, especially if you're eating like five times throughout the day or six times throughout the day because it's summer and the days are long and you're out and you're in and you're out and you're in, you're eating a lot. Just make sure that like every other eating time you're having, there's veggies. So you wake up in the morning, let's say you're having eggs and toast or pancakes and yogurt or something like that. And it's not necessarily has vegetables in it, but just think, you know, the next time I want something to eat that it's not like a meal time, or even if it is meal time, I should really get a salad as my base. I should slice up some veggies. I should make zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash, or, you know, throw a bag of cauliflower florets into the microwave or take frozen broccoli and put it on a baking sheet with some garlic salt and olive oil spray and just get some more vegetables into your day because that's really what we want to fill up on uh, first and foremost as as even just like as we age and want to be healthy um, and certainly if you're trying to achieve weight loss you definitely want to make sure you have veggies in it so um, that's that's a good idea so I just kind of broke into food groups but the first idea was just make a snack a noun and not a verb that's my first point uh, the next thing is my slogan I always say water first, veggies most. It's my trademark. It's my <laughs> hashtag. Um, it's really exciting. There's now like hundreds of thousands of people who know water first, veggies most. My four words that I uh, coined and I'm super always excited about. I have a huge, I think my place is pretty messy, but I have a huge water first, veggies most sign on my, <laughs> on my wall. And then it's on my water bottle, my be Mindset water bottle and everywhere else. Uh, water first, veggies most. Before you have a snack, you always want to make sure you're having at least a couple sips of water first. A lot of times we feel like we're so hungry and really we're just thirsty. A lot of times we're uh, more thirsty than we are hungry, but it's hard to tell because within our brain, within those signals, uh, they're kind of crossed. And what tells us we're hungry sometimes sounds a lot louder than thirst. Um, but when you start getting a habit of just drinking a couple sips of water first prior to making a snack or making a meal, you literally, like your focus, your energy, your fullness factor, like everything just gets regulated in such a smart way, super easy, water first. And then obviously I already cut to veggies pretty early on. Um, next thing in finding a snack is, you want to make sure it's filling. So that's the big issue. A lot of you are probably listening and you're like, oh, this sounds very ideal. Have a snack and don't just eat popcorn out of a big bucket while binging on Netflix. I get it. It sounds ideal. I'm an overeater. I come from a place where I have zero control or order or structure around my eating. But when I learned more about nutrition, I became a registered dietitian. I got my master's degree in nutrition through practice, through counseling, through teaching at UCLA and so forth. I have realized control is achievable if you take the right steps it's like not like i would not have had control over this delicious chocolate babka kakosh thing that we had at our shabbat meal yesterday i would normally not have any control but because i made sure i was i had such a filling lunch i had 
water first. I had veggies. I had protein to make sure I stayed full. Then I was able to have a sliver um, with a tea and be done. That's amazing. I, for me, that's still amazing. Even though I've, you know, been at this weight through two kids and I've maintained my weight loss for a few years, it's still amazing to feel a great sense of control over something. I used to be able to eat the whole thing in one sitting, no problem. So um, you want to make sure you're fueling up right. So water first, veggies most always helps, but you want to also make sure that you're having protein. Protein in a snack makes you stay full. So just having veggies alone won't be enough to get full. You really need protein to help you stay full. That line should really resonate with you. It's a big thing within my To Be Mindset Weight Loss program, within my book. I really try to explain people because it's simple, but it really makes sense. If you feel like you're always wanting another snack, every hour you want a snack, your kids, or your kids just bugging you nonstop, like they just want a snack, they just want a snack, and it's like you're over it, make sure you're weaving protein in. So I have a couple of examples of high protein snacks. I could do um, brands and ideas at the end, but... Um, protein. You want to make sure you have protein. And then when the next food group is carbs, um, carbs are good. Carbs give you sustained energy. If you're feeling wonky all day um, and you don't know what's going on, it's because you maybe need more carbs, especially if you're trying to work out, especially if you're trying to get the energy to take a walk in the afternoon, especially if you're, we're talking about kids here. Kids need carbs. We need carbs. We need them to fuel our body, brain, and function. Um, but there are two different kinds of carbs. There's white, um, like you know, white pasta, white bread, white crackers. And then we have the higher fiber ones, okay? So things that have whole grain, um, or fresh fruit are always going to be better sources because you always want more fiber, the better. Uh, why fiber? I, I feel like that's a whole nother talk. Uh, maybe I can come back and do it. But what I will tell you is one, it helps you stay fuller longer and it also prevents uh, spikes and crashes of energy. If there's no fiber and you're just having, um, leftover challah or just cake or just a cupcake or something, you can get that short burst of energy from the snack and then it's kind of a crash and you're looking for more and more food. The point of having a snack is so you stay full so you can eat, you can enjoy, and you can move on with your day. So um, those are the goals. And then by the way, I have another food group I call accessories. Accessories is because I don't expect you to just eat green bell pepper slice. I rarely uh, have that raw Ever. Um, I like delicious food. I like flavors. I like sauces. I like condiments, guacamole, hummus. Um, this is like a vegan thousand island I'm obsessed with. It's kosher parv. I actually uh, copied this in my to be my, this is a secret. I don't think I've ever said that publicly, um, but I'm obsessed with it so much. I wanted to like remake it. So in my book, uh, it's in my book, I believe in the animal style cauliflower nacho thing. This is the thousand island I try to copy, but this one's parv. So if you're a uh, kosher and you don't have meat and milk together this is a great par of one this brand follow your heart and then i made my own uh, one with greek yogurt uh, for my program uh, which is great with cabbage steaks and then i love these bolt house farms um yogurt dressings these are great too they're o-u-d okay so that's just a little bit about snacks so now we know try to call it a noun on a verb um try to have something like closed ended and like set not just a you know, free for all, um, for your overall energy too. And, um, think about those food groups and what you want. Okay. Question. We have a couple of questions coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, someone asked what is, um, a typical food day for you? Um, and additionally, if you can then talk a little bit about the ideal number of snacks throughout the day, or how can we kind of compartmentalize um, a better eating structure. So first, what is the ideal typical, uh, excuse me, the typical food day for you? And then how can we in general, for the most part, um, you know, structure the day with snacking? And okay. So great questions. Um, every day is different. Every person is different. Every day is different. Uh, you know, I am very fortunate that I was hired by UCLA to lead weight loss and nutrition seminars and they would give me a hundred UCLA employees from professors to people who worked in the gym to janitors to like um like the custodian staff to therapists to just everything in between I had a hundred people every semester and I got to teach it for 10 semesters so like I got to and I got to have private sessions with every person inside that group and then I do now private clients and I have like a monthly 
membership with over 120,000 people in it, which is like insane to me right now. But I've worked with so many, so many people. And like, I know for myself, every day is just different. It's really great to have some sort of order and structure, but if I'm going to print you out a meal plan, you are not going to follow it. Um, it's possible that you will for a week, for two weeks, for three weeks, and then like holidays will come in, you're gonna, your meal plan will say grilled chicken and asparagus, you're gonna wanna get sushi with your spouse and it all goes out the window. So I really try not to create any sort of rigid structure for myself or anyone because life happens like even just i don't know if any of you are like sabbath observant or not sabbath observant but like the days are longer now so like shabbat is longer and so like you have to structure like when it makes sense to eat then or, or whatever so just so you know i designed my program and my philosophy on how everyone could feel like a private client and customize my suggestions to their own selves and you have that experience um, if you do my to be mindset program but what i would say the general recommendation i like to make for people um, in a food eating structure is i believe in breakfast that doesn't mean it's any sort of time some people are too nauseous in the morning they don't like to have breakfast right away some people like me need something in the first hour if we want to get anything done so whenever it is you should have uh, a meal whenever it works best for you after you've had water first in that first meal you have in a day let's call it breakfast <laughs> all of this is so political and could be like taken different ways so um sometimes i talk about breakfast people say i don't eat breakfast and they just check out but that first meal of the day just think about it you want something that's going to give you good energy so you want some carbohydrates that because carbohydrates give us energy first thing in the morning we need good energy you want those carbohydrates to be fiber filled um so you want at least I don't hope to not confuse you, but um, it could be a whole nother day also. I have all these videos uh, deeper for all these topics if you want more focus, but I know it's flipped, but total carbohydrates is 14. I always recommend you have at least one gram of fiber for 10 grams of carbs. So the best way to think about it, I know it's backwards, so this might not be helpful, but total carbs is 14. Just move the decimal 1.4. You always want at least 1.4 grams of fiber in something like this. This has four grams of fiber, so this would be a good something good that has carbs in it. Um, here's another example, these dehydrated apple chips, 28 grams, so you want 2.8 grams of fiber um, in that. So back to basics, question was, what do you want first thing in the morning? You want something that's fiber, like fruit, like oatmeal, like whole grain toast, uh, something like that. And you wanna pair it with protein, uh, eggs, Greek yogurt, protein shake. Um, you can Lana, what was the bread? What was the brand of the um of the the bar that you just what was the bar that you just shared? This, this bar um doesn't have a half shirt. I don't know the religiosity of this crowd. I'm sorry. Um, I, but I know some people on here who we'll are. Just use an example. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this doesn't have um a kosher symbol on it. It is a vegan bar. Um, and it's called the Beach Bar, and I actually love these, especially for like the car and my bag. Um, and so this is a great snack. Uh, because one, it has, uh, I'm going back to the meal time. So first thing in the morning, you want carbs uh, that have good energy and you also want proteins so you stay full through the morning. If you feel very hungry at that first meal, veggies are always extra credit. So I always like to say, so that should round out your first meal. So something like full grain toast, two eggs, maybe have some sauteed spinach. That's a great idea. Uh, I'm not a big believer in a mid morning snack because I think that that kind of like derails a good appetite for lunch. And also mid morning is a really great opportunity to be catching up on those water ounces. So I don't believe in a mid morning snack so much, but that completely looks different. If let's say, you know, lunch is going to be at two and you're hungry, then you might need a mid morning snack. Again, that's why I don't make any general recommendations, but this is kind of overarching for my program. You'll see, I don't really recommend a mid morning snack. Then lunch, lunch, we want all food groups on deck. We want veggies, we want protein, we want um, fiber filled carbs. We want um, delicious accessories, fats, oils, dressings, marinades to make it a satisfying meal because you wanna get full, you wanna stay full, you wanna have good energy and you wanna be satisfied through your afternoon. If your lunch is filling enough, you will still probably want a snack, but if it's not filling at all, you're gonna want a snack all afternoon. Every woman specifically I've ever spoken to um, especially moms, it's the hours between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. that like, it just gets crazy. Um, you start like eating goldfish from the pantry while trying to make dinner. It's like this crazy balagon. So um, I work with like so many moms. It's like that I tend to like have to really work on that area. I work on the area 
recently with a private client. It's like amazing. Just from one set. Well, she already lost weight from reading my book and then she became a private client, but she's lost like nine pounds in the past couple of weeks just because like it was like pretzel rods in this like anxious time. Um, just mindlessly. Do you, do you recommend, do you recommend, um, eating, do you suggest eating small amounts several times throughout the day to keep blood sugar? No. So I, it's actually the opposite. So it's the opposite. I think you should eat, you should enjoy so you can move on. So that's the goal for lunch. Eat a good amount, enjoy it, make sure it's filling and satisfying so you can move on. The snack will come in if, you need it, but you'll be smart about it so that you do have an appetite for dinner, then have a really big satisfying dinner. And I actually believe in a concept. This is only if you're out for achieving weight loss, not for anything else. Um, but if you are after weight loss, I have a principle called dinner and done. The goal is to not be snacking all night. Um, but that is only achievable if lunch and dinner um, and maybe earlier snack and breakfast are filling enough. So if you so, feel- So if you had, if you needed to get that 4 p.m. sugar craving, or, you know, some people are asking, like, what would be your recommendation for a healthy but decadent snacks? Sugar, like a, like a specific, um, a specific example you can give. Maybe okay, I brought tons of stuff. Okay. So a lot of people do crave like sweets in that afternoon, myself included. So we want a snack that is going to keep us full, that's going to have fiber, it's going to give us good energy, uh, but it's closed ended so that you don't just get into a habit of snacking all afternoon. So I really recommend like packaged products obviously you could eat whole foods and not have it in a package but either way i like just things that you could feel comfortable finishing the bag i like to finish bag things it makes me feel complete it's very much easier to track if you're doing to be mindset my program like you want foods that are easy to track so whatever okay so meanwhile this uh dried apple chips or like a sliced fruit or something um is great fiber and then like a string cheese would pair nicely as a snack in the afternoon. This is a great brand called Kay's. Um, this is their white cheddar cheese. It tastes like, um, you know, like um, cheddar cheese crackers, but the best flavor is their cinnamon. Um, and I have all these links in my Instagram and, and my Amazon links if you want to see that later. Um, but Kay's cinnamon is great. It tastes like cinnamon toast crunch but each bag is 12 grams of protein, two grams of fiber, it's awesome. Have that with a bunch of baby carrots or some like mini bell peppers and dip, you'd be satisfied. Another great brand, Siren, these also are kosher. Um, and these are kind of like a chopped up protein bar. So um, I really love these, seven grams of protein per bag. The, you know, it's like um, protein powder, dates, tapioca syrup, like it's kind of like little cookie bites, um, but they're sweet and delicious. So um, yeah, and then I make like these Wonder Whips. I, I'll take a, have a Greek yogurt in the afternoon with that, add stevia and peanut butter powder. Um, so, and then also like a miso delicious dip that you could have with veggies or you could roast some that are sweeter. So yes, like totally you can fulfill your sweet tooth. You just want to be smart about it if the goal is you know, trying to have like maybe a little bit more control over your food and, and eat in a sustained energy and weight loss fashion or just healthy weight maintenance fashion. Oh, and then these bars, but again, I like these bars are great. It's a snack bar, it's 150 calories, it's 10 grams of protein, and it has uh, four grams of fiber. Awesome, and it's great, like dipped into a coffee. So there's some also like protein bars uh, that can be helpful too, because they kind of taste like cookies, but they keep you more. Yeah. No, this is great. This is really helpful. Um, how much protein would you say is optimal for each meal or how much protein should people kind of, I know it's different from each person, but what should we really shoot for? I know you gave the ratio, but how much should we shoot for? Um, and snack so it's not, you know, too hard on the kidneys over the day if people are kind of loading up on protein because, you know, we're conditioned to think that that's kind of the balancer. Um, and then someone, I'm going to ask another question. Someone at, said that they recently heard that soybean oil is actually terrible for us to eat ever. Do you know anything about that? Can you speak to that? Um, sure. The first question about the protein, the optimal amount of protein, and then the soybean oil. Yeah. Um, when it comes to protein, uh, I the overloading of a, the kidneys thing, I mean, that is definitely if you're doing some sort of like intense keto, like making yourself crazy over protein situation. Um, anyone who like is eating the way I would recommend is probably going to be far from ever 
overloading on protein, um, just being like the ratios and the way I explain uh, eating. And also people usually only overload like wild on protein to the point that it's harmful when they've cut out so many other food groups and options that inherently are just going to eat too much protein. But when you focus on not cutting things out and you have a balance of all food groups and you eat how I recommend you, you should be okay. The goal for protein is to, why people say like Americans eat too much protein um, or, or you might see that a lot of it is because it's not dispersed properly. Like people have like maybe like a bagel for breakfast with very little protein. Um, maybe like some, like pizza for lunch, very little protein overall. Um, and then for dinner, it's like a big steak. So that disproportion of protein is not what we want. The goal for protein in terms of optimal muscle synthesis and getting the benefits out of protein is to actually have a dispersed uh, intake of protein throughout the day. A little bit of breakfast, a little bit of lunch, a little bit of dinner. Um, you know, I... I grew up going to dietitians, um, you know, who would show me serving sizes of, of proteins. And I always laughed because, you know, sometimes I need three of these salmons to get full. And sometimes I just need a couple of bites. Um, and every day is, is different. So I do recommend, I'm never going to tell people like just have the palm because if you worked out a lot and you are really hungry after the meal and even after a lot of vegetables you still want more protein it'll probably be more than healthy for you to have more protein you probably won't gain weight eating too much protein when it's smart protein um but uh, i do recommend tracking what you are having and learning from it uh which is kind of uh how my weight loss program teaches you is to like kind of work off your best things so if you feel overly full or or you're gaining weight or your energy is not great, you learn to pare down and find out what that sweet spot is. I like to eat like two chicken thighs at a time. I think it's easy to think two chicken thighs at a time. It's like quantifiable rather than maybe like big stir fries that I have a hard time stop eating and I don't really know how much I had of it. So that's a tip that might be helpful um, to like quantify it in some way so you know that it's the amount of protein that feels good rather than um, kind of sluggish, which could happen. Onto the soybean oil situation. Soy, this is how I feel about soy. Um, the people of the world who consume the most amount of soy happen to be the healthiest people we have. So uh, women, in, uh, women and men in Okinawa, Japan, who consume bundles of edamame pods and tofu and you know these soy-based ingredients actually live the longest, they're part of the blue zones, the people who have the greatest lifespans and have the lowest rates of heart disease and cancers, including breast cancer. So it's not necessarily soy that is the issue as much as it is genetically modified soy that we've like kind of like turned into this like whopping weird thing. So when people say they're like scared of soy um, and it's not something their doctor said for any reason, uh, it's, it's, it could be like a food products. Um, we consume so much soy in America. We don't eat that much edamame and tofu or soy milk, but a lot of it comes from taking soybean oil and adding it to those center aisles of the grocery store. Um, the products I'm recommending here, I don't believe, um, use soy oil. This one, these K's do use non-GMO, uh, soy protein, uh, which a little bit, here and there like there, it's fine unless your doctor medically says not but like if you're having some soy every other day or anything like that you should be overall healthy soy has actually been proven to have heart protective benefits um and uh, you can look at the ingredients to see if this soybean oil again like it, and ingredients go by area of weight so if it's like the last ingredient it might not really matter but if it's you know, something you guys have been eating tons of, like it's frozen lakas. And the frozen lakas, like the first thing it says is cottonseed or soybean oil. Like it's not the greatest thing. Like you could find other ones. Cottonseed oil, by the way, is like the worst oil for you. And you would only find those in super kosher products. I really try to make a rule as much as possible to avoid cottonseed oil containing things. Um, but around Pesach, it's really hard to avoid. Okay. Um, so a question that kind of always comes up when people are thinking about dieting or, you know, health, incorporating health, healthy eating habits is this new kind of fad of intermittent fasting. Um, what do you think about that? And how does that tie into 
snacking also, um, if at all, um, what do you think? E only eating between 1 and 7 p.m. or how, whatever? Here, yeah, by the way, I, next time someone has a question, I'd love to hear them come on and say it because uh, it's always more fun. Some, people, some of them aren't, the camera's not on. They're just saying Oh, it. okay. Guys, I love your cameras on. Thank you, Sarah, Arthur, Carmela, Harriet, Sandra. Love you guys, Robin, Mirna. Thank you guys for being on. I usually like this to be more interactive. Sorry about that. Um, okay, in terms of intermittent fasting, I I um I think anything that is a hard and fast rule can be really good or bad. Um, and I think it really depends on the person. And I also think any person who has a hard and fast rule for themselves, like I'm going vegan, um, everything should come with a area of flexibility when it especially pertains to your food. Um, I think people get really caught up in times and uh, it, it could be like, it could cause an unhealthy relationship with food because we need food and our time is a lot of time fluctuates. So I really don't like to make any blanket rules like you have to eat breakfast within 30 minutes or you can't eat past 7 p.m. or any things like this because I know I would never be able to follow that in my life. Um, and thinking I need to follow that is going to make me overly obsess and overeat. So um, here's how I feel about intermittent fasting. For some people, they say it works for them. They've lost weight. They feel great. They maintain a healthy life. It's helped them in a lot of ways. Call Hakavod. Yes, that's great. I think overall, any sort of rule like that is not going to work for more than 8% of the population. Um, so you have to acknowledge for yourself, if you're trying it or you have tried it, you have to acknowledge like, Am I part of the 8% of the population or is this really not working for me overall? Um, for me, I tried intermittent fasting on two occasions of like three or four or five day spans and I felt awful. Um, I just, I felt like I was overeating before the window closed um, and then my energy was like horrible afterwards. Um, I felt like it just made me feel like I need to eat so much so I'm not hungry in the next 16 hours. Like it didn't make me relax. It made me overeat and uh, maybe gain weight um, and not feel good. So I think there are some people that are rocking it. It's like they wake up, they have coffee, they work out, like whatever their schedule is, it makes sense. For me, it hasn't. Um, and for like my like thousands of clients who've lost like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, 100, 120 pounds. I don't think I have more than 4% who are probably doing intermittent fasting. Like there's 96% of people I work with, like hundreds and hundreds of incredible and incredible testimonials. They're eating at seven, they're eating at 12, they're eating at four, they're eating at eight, they're losing weight, you know, they're feeling good. So I hope that answers that question. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we have a few more questions that have come in. Um, as we age, anyone who wants to ask, yeah, I opened it up there. Yeah. Um, as we age, do we need less calories? And then um, another one is, uh, what's your recommendation for weight loss? Kind of like besides, you know, the veggies, uh, water fruits, veggies most, or just kind of the recommendation, um, a big takeaway. Um, and then finally, um, as our children as we kind of eventually hopefully go back to you know everyday routine and some sense of normalcy do you have um any recommendations for go-to snacks especially for kids um you know quick on the go um as well as using some staples that you may have at the home given you know the current situation where people are adverse to kind of constantly go out um and get in grocery shops so do we need less calories as we get as we age? Recommendations for maintaining weight loss, and then kind of staples at home and snacking as we return to hopefully some sense of normalcy. Yeah, um, I might have to ask you to do each one individually. Uh, okay, the less calories while we age. So I just did a really um, so. I just did a, I have a monthly membership, uh, the monthly mindset, and I cover a, like a hot topic, each one, like the monthly topic and go deep in it. So 
One month was ending late night eating. One month was, you know, budgeting smart on food shopping savvy like that. One was breaking a plateau by thinking about changing things in your food groups um, and so forth. So one was recently we just covered everything. So I did, so for everyone on this call who didn't necessarily ask that question, we did a prenatal, we did a postpartum and breastfeeding, and we did a menopause and also just PMS. So like losing weight in PMS, losing weight in menopause, losing weight postpartum, controlling your weight while pregnant, like whole deep dive. Um, so based on whatever stage of life you're in, um, you can check that out or the other ones because there's some stages you know you're gonna have to deal with later on. So uh, when it comes to needing less calories as we age, what I, what I learned in my research uh, with menopause, I found fascinating and I can't stop thinking about, uh, was women may gain weight in their middle age. The average age of starting menopause is 51, which I thought was surprising. And uh, women may gain weight in that time and era. The interesting thing is, Studies have shown, and I, I know this is like the annoying thing that I have to deliver, but it helps me to hear this, so uh, it might sound tough, but studies have shown that it's not the hormonal changes that should be causing a weight gain in this stage of life, in the 50s and 60s and beyond. It's actually because we become more sedentary in this stage of life and Eat it and drinking, eating and particularly drinking stays the same, if not goes up. So something to think about in terms of aging, you wanna stay as active as you can all your life. Um, it's so important to stay active, especially now in 2020, we do have a little extra time of driving you were gonna do, like even going to this event in person and not like, that's a 40 minute time, like to slip in a walk every day is really a great idea or a workout. Um, rather than focus on do we need less calories as we age, I think it's really important. I always like to think on what we are getting um, and what we should be focused on rather than be calorie based. But yes, like you wanna make sure that you're staying as active in some capacity, always. It's really easy to just sit around and, and nosh and drink and hang out with your friends, but try to make a walking group among you and not just mahjong and, and nuts and cookies. Um, or at least if it's gonna be snacking and you are just sitting around talking and playing cards or whatever it is on Shabbos or on any day, you know, really bring out that veggie platter, add a hummus, add a guacamole, add, you know, a uh, ranch dressing dip that you can add some lemon juice to to thin it out a bit and you know find ways to do that and drink just as much water uh, and be leaner but of course like a 65 year old woman is not going to need the same carbs as her 17 year old son or grandson you know so it it always makes sense that throughout life we're always recalibrating uh, what we need based on our activity based on our stress based on our goals uh, for our health and our body. So yes, things do change. I go a little bit more into specifics within that research and that video, um, but try to just stay as active as you can and and have more water and veggies um, throughout your life if, if you are just sitting around eating more often. And then alcohol, you have to be really careful with because alcohol tends to go up in this stage of life also. So you wanna just find like lower calorie mixers or use all natural, sweetened water enhancers rather than cranberry juice and orange juice when you are drinking um, or grape juice and all that stuff. Uh, so that's the thing on aging. The next thing was, um, you know, your, your go-to recommendation for maintaining weight loss and is it kind of, is it very heavy on the water? Does water- Oh, kind of on weight maintenance. Okay. So I see that question um, from Michelle. Mm -hmm. Recommendation for for yeah. maintenance, for maintaining a weight loss. Um, oh, for maintaining weight loss in general. Okay. For me, I only, I talk about maintenance from the start. For like when I decided I was going to lose weight and like go from a size 20 to a size two or whatever it was going to be, I decided like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> it was after several years of yo-yo dieting and I knew I just had enough. I'm done. I'm losing this weight so I can keep it off for good. So my program is, has that from the start. I, in my book, you can drop it. I have a whole section on maintenance mode, how you're gonna maintain the weight, 
because I want someone even in the first week of losing weight to be thinking how they're going to be maintaining weight. Very important. I make all my private clients always have that sentiment. Um, so if you are about to start another diet, right? Like you want to start um, keto, paleo, something else. I definitely recommend doing my program, but if you wanted to do anything else, it's totally fine. I know so many Jews love this Octavia and so forth, juices and smoothies and all that stuff. If you're going to do that, just think, is this something I'll be able to really want to do in a year and a half from now? Because the goal is to enjoy the weight loss process, to enjoy the food you're eating throughout, to make it feel good and exciting, because then maintaining it is just muscle memory. You're just doing what you're doing and you're just not losing weight anymore. You're eating enough to keep it off um, and feel good in your body and great. And then you could throw in some treats here because you're not necessarily in weight loss unless you're throwing in a little bit more treats, but you're still eating overall 90% the way that you've eaten along the way that feels good for you. Um, so my best tip on maintaining your weight loss is make sure that you're enjoying the weight loss every step of the way. That's how I design my program. That's how I did it so that you're not the whole time you're on a diet. You're just planning when you're going to be able to eat pizza again. That is going to make you crazy because then the, if it's so if it's such a sense of deprivation the weight gain will always come back the weight will always come back that's just like a fact i've seen over and over and over again for people um so that's my best recommendation for maintaining a weight loss um so now, i don't know if you saw the comment oh yeah carmela's in doing my that's great yay lost 25 pounds yeah congratulations um if it's okay with you i'm going to just give you the last question unless someone wants to jump in while you're answering this one but um, just what um, are the staples that you um, you rec that you recommend to have at home? Like I said, especially now when things are still not formal, and you know. Oh right, right, with the snacks. Just, okay. Just totally. staples for snacks, staples for meals. Yeah. Just you know, some products. Yeah. Um, that would so always honestly, honestly, and truly, I don't think like I'm not into making anyone spend a lot of money on any fancy or particular thing. But I will tell you, and Adina might disagree because <laughs> we have different values, but like if you were planning on getting yourself like any sort of bag or shoes or, or anything like that, honestly, the priorities, if you're, if you're spending a dime right now, my best advice would be get some great kitchen tools. In the end, you always save money if you have good kitchen tools because you're just not as quick to buy other things. So for example, I just posted on Instagram before I did this video, I just posted on Instagram how I made homemade popsicles, which sounds like really daunting and scary. It's really not. Like so if you cut up a watermelon and you cut up melon, you guys eat it day one, you try to get everyone to eat it day two. By day three, if you still have a couple pieces, they're just like kind of whatever, and you don't know if you get rid of it. And you're just like, so that's the best time you throw it in a blender, like any leftover fruit. If you have leftover watermelon or strawberries that are kind of going bad, whatever it is, you put it, put it in a good blender, add a base like almond milk, oat milk, coconut cream, water, whatever you want. So I'm add a little sweetener, add some lemon juice um, and put in popsicle molds. And tomorrow, like it's a whole, it's six. Like I just like that. I just saved $4. So I'm going to, I'm going to recommend some products that cost some money, but I'm telling you it's worth it. Um, so, and I have all the links on my Instagram. I post what I use, but a good blender is really great. Um, I had like five rounds of bad blenders and I just kept cheaping out. I don't have a, even the Vitamix, like just like the grand whatever, but I did um, just post on my Instagram, like the Ninja I have. It is great. If you press the smoothie uh, button, it goes 70 seconds. I never realized that the trick to the best smoothie is 70 seconds. I think you could even probably do this on a, on like a lower quality or older blender, but let it blend for a long time. It really whips smoothies into feeling like um, frothy and ice cream like. So good kitchen um, tools and devices I think are great. An air fryer, um, Isarella just asked about an air fryer. Air fryers are game changing. So if you are gonna be cooking more at home this fall, you know your kids aren't going back to school or whatever it is, some of these things are great. Air fryers are amazing. It's like, you don't have to turn on the whole oven. Even if you're just defrosting your kids' chicken nuggets, um, putting it in an air fryer will make them crispier and it's, they're awesome, like so much better than a microwave, but not as big as an oven. Um, and for you, it's awesome for making like my crispy cabbage, which is in my book, and like salmon in the air fryer is amazing. Like literally just the filet of salmon in the air fryer is 
to die for. Um, so I would get yourself some kitchen tools. One of my favorite kitchen tools ever, which is great for kids' snacks and for your own, is a hard-boiled egg maker. I talk about it all the time. I'm obsessed with my hard-boiled egg maker. We just went away um, and like rented a house and as a family and went away. I brought our hard-boiled egg maker with us. Hard-boiled egg, such a good snack. So good. It's like an amazing source of protein. And it lasts, like if the eggs are hard boiled in the shell, they could actually last in your fridge like two weeks. Once you peel them, they last less. And honestly, they never go that long. Don't quote me on the two weeks, but it's like a long time. I think it's at least 10 days. Um, so hard boiled egg maker, get a good yourself a good blender. These are all things that can help you whip up healthier, more affordable, and just better snacks for you and your kids. Um, good pan. Um, and air fryer, like these, these things are really worthwhile. So for snacks for your kids, um, it's easier. Hopefully our kids will be in school. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I think if there are no more questions at the moment, um, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. And of course, thank you, Alana, for these incredible, incredible tips. Um, and a special thanks to Adina and to Power Up uh, sponsored, um, as well as our other sponsors that um, joined us this evening. Um, we'll be sharing everything that Alana talked about, the recording. We'll be sharing the recording uh, in our email in the next uh, day or two, as well as how to get in touch with Alana if you want to know more. And I want to answer this last question, tomorrow's oh, last no, question no. also. I, I don't want to cut you off. You. I, I, I actually would love if anyone had opinions on this and you don't want to come on, you could write in the chat. In terms of air fryer versus an instant pot, this is a, this is, this is like a question I've been debating in my mind. I personally would say the air fryer, um, especially if you already have a crock pot. So if you already have a crock pot, I, I prefer my um, air fryer. I decided to get rid of my crock pot so I could just get an instant pot because they have a crock pot function and I'm very upset it's not working well as a crock pot. And um, I don't use the instant pot as much, but some people are obsessed with instant pot. If they heard what I just said, they would like crucify me. My friend has lots of kids. She hard boils like a whole carton of eggs in her instant pot. She swears by it. Um, I have recipes within my program, like instant pot enchilada bowl. It is like the best viewed thing. So I know like thousands and thousands of people love their instant pot. Um, so they're going to kill me for saying this, but people are, people are, can share their, um, their opinions on yeah. it. You're in the crock pot several nights. Ooh, if you do your dinner in the crock pot several nights a week, you might like the air fryer. Do you need a dedicated air fryer? What about toaster oven? That's convection. I think now we're getting technical. I don't know the answer to that question. And then, um, some Beth keeps, um, people asking if you're interested about the program. Um, I would go to uh, try to be mindset.com. If you want to just like, you can watch my whole program right now. Go watch it in like under three hours, my video based program. So um, I could type it here if that's helpful. Um, and then I know Lebron's sending an email about my book and everything, but I could just put it here because we're a small and my group. This is great. Okay, I'll stop talking. Thank you, Lerone. Thank you, everyone. Oh, of course, of course. If no one, I mean, by all means, you know, if people want to chime in and say anything, I'm more than happy to. Um, but I, wanted to, I hope I was helpful. No, this is this was really, really helpful. I think all of us uh, benefit from kind of getting these reminders on how to, to snack a little bit healthier, especially that we're home probably more than we than we normally are. Um, to everyone who joined tonight, um, thank you again. And I hope you'll continue to join us in other upcoming virtual programs. Um, and hopefully someday soon, um, we're in person, a meet event, yes. or whatever that'll be. Um, but again, Alana, thank you so much. Adina, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lebron. Thank you, Adina. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for being on this call and for a meet. Great, great, um, great cause. So thank you all for being on here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank Everyone. you.